Magandang araw sa inyong lahat. Good day to all. I am Dr. Carmencita Padilla, one of the proponents of the newborn screening program in the Philippines. Join me in uncovering the wonderful story of newborn screening in our country. Together, let's zoom in on what makes newborn screening a comprehensive program for every Filipino here at Newborn Screening in Focus. To ensure that newborns are truly healthy, they must undergo newborn screening, a public health program that helps determine if a baby is born with one of the more than 20 congenital disorders. Its importance cannot be overemphasized. If any of the congenital disorders is left undetected and not managed immediately, it can lead to mental retardation and even death. It was integrated into the public health delivery system with the enactment of Republic Act 9288 or the Newborn Screening Act of 2004. Now part of the PhilHealth's newborn care package, newborn screening is being offered in more than 7,000 hospitals and birthing centers nationwide. It has also saved thousands of children. This educational series is intended for health professionals who deliver services of the newborn screening program. Whether you're online or offline, this program aims to further enrich your knowledge in newborn screening and be able to apply the highest quality service to Filipinos, especially during challenging times. We will discuss the very process of newborn screening from the moment the baby is born and into the continuing care available for newborns found positive. We will also zero in on the features and management of each of the conditions included in the newborn screening panel. We will also interview patients as well as their parents. And in keeping up with the challenges, talk over how facilities and centers manage to give quality service despite the limits brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic. This program is the newest educational platform for our newborn screening coordinators. One in every 7,200 health facilities throughout the country. We also hope that this series will also benefit the health professionals, physicians, nurses, midwives, med techs, nutritionists, as well as students in the health professions. So take a seat, get comfortable, as you're in for quite an adventure here at Newborn Screening in Focus. Babies delivered, ginagawang po namin ng newborn screening. Pag po sila ay premature, o kaya meron po silang problem like uh, sepsis or may pneumonia sila at birth, ginagawa pa rin namin ng newborn screening. Pero pag po sila ay may sakit, inuulit po ang newborn screening after 28 days. Doon sa mga test na nagawa, at tinatawagan po ang magulang, tapos po ipinaliliwanag sa kanila kung ano yung naging dahilan, kung uh, bakit sila pinatawag. Tapos po, sinasabihan po namin sila na uulitin yung test para i-confirm kung yung test na nag-positive ay talagang positive na sila. At the whole Philippines knows it already. Alam na po ng parents ang newborn screening. Kaya majority po ng parents wala na hong tumatanggi magpa-newborn screen. Kasi naipaliwanag na po namin ng mga previous years yan. Kaya aware na po ang parents. Uh, ang nangyayari pa nga ho, ayaw nilang umanap sa isang place na walang nag-o-offer ng newborn screening. We do not experience now yung uh, negative answer for the newborn screening. Before, yes, we uh, we, we received so many uh, negative answers. Pero ngayon po, wala na pong 
tumatanggi pagka newborn screening ang pag-uusapan. Last week, we discussed a number of factors which may affect the newborn screening result and thus may warrant repeat collection. This episode will be a continuation of that, but now focusing on the neonatal factors, specifically prematurity and low birth weight, and other neonatal factors affecting our newborn screening. Approximately 15 million babies are born preterm annually worldwide, indicating a global preterm birth weight of about 11%. In addition, it is estimated that 15 to 20% of all births worldwide are low birth weight, representing more than 20 million births a year. Newborn screening of this special group of newborns warrants discussion and special attention to provide timely and adequate newborn screening. Today, we are happy to have two neonatologists, Dr. Maria Paz Virginia Otaiza, or Bing, Dr. Bing, the unit head of Newborn Screening Center, Northern Luzon, and Dr. Edgar Winston, position, or Dr. Ed, the unit head of the Newborn Screening Center in Visayas. Welcome to Newborn Screening in Focus. We have Dr. Bing, Dr. Ed, uh, good day to both of you. In the last episode, we talked about the many factors that can affect a newborn screening result. But we decided to dedicate one episode specifically for the premature, the low birth weight, and the sick neonate. So let's start our conversation. Before we go into the results, Dr. Bing, what do you mean by prematurity? Ma'am, the premature baby is any baby who is born before 37 completed weeks of gestation. So that is a broad definition of a premature baby. Oh, what about a low birth weight? A low birth weight one is per the NSRC memo, which was issued in 2014. We describe and define the low birth weights as babies who are born less than 2,000 grams. Um, however, if one is asked again, and I'm sure a lot of our listeners will be saying, Oh, but we know that it is less than 2.5 kilos. Per the program, ma'am, we define our low birth weights as those babies born less than 2.5 kilograms. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bing. And what is a sick neonate, uh, Dr. Ed? Broadly speaking, a sick neonate is any baby who is admitted to the newborn intensive care unit. So, so if the attending pediatrician or physician has deemed it necessary that a child be admitted in the intensive care unit or obviously for intensive care and that's considered a sick baby. From an operational point of view, when you say a baby is sick, he is uh, unstable, meaning that the vital signs are not, are erratic. He may be having hypoxic episodes, he may be having hypotensive episodes. Uh, usually they are on some kind of support. They are on oxygen or they are on CPAP or they're on a mechanical ventilator. They may be, uh, they may have hemodynamic uh, instability, so they may be on pressure support, they may be on fluid. And at this point in the baby, in the intensive care, it's uh, more than likely on antibiotics already. So whenever you say a sick kid, whenever you say the baby is sick, he is uh, fighting for his life literally. You know? uh, and therefore the baby is uh, admitted to the intensive care unit for intensive monitoring. What we're hearing from Dr. Bing and Dr. Ed is that this information will be very critical for the proper interpretation of the results. So my first question, and uh, you know, Dr. Bing and Dr. Ed is, do these patients have to undergo screening? Maybe I can start with Dr. Ed. Uh, yes. Um, there are many metabolic disorders uh, of genetic nature that will manifest as a sick baby or you know, low birth weight as well as well as premature. 
so new worsening should be done uh, in the same way uh, as it is for preterm low birth weight with sick babies, except uh, that when you are, when the attending is planning to transfuse, uh, then they have to do the newborn screening early. Second, uh, the newborn screening needs, needs to be repeated for very important reasons. Whenever a baby is sick or premature or low birth weight, there are many external factors that came into play that made this baby premature or sick or low birth weight. And so these external factors, most of them are maternal, will affect the test. And so the baby needs time to physiologically normalize, to uh, biologically normalize. And that is why it is important that a repeat test be done uh, when the baby is, is recovering or has recovered already. Okay. Dr. Bing, would you like to add anything uh, to, uh, to the discussion? On our part from the NICU, most definitely it's a yes. All babies, particularly the premature babies. And it's very critical for us to get out those results, especially the initial baseline results prior to any transfusions. And I agree with Ed. That's most often the reason why we have to really repeat the screenings for the preterm and sick baby. So, so two important points there. Uh, whether the baby is premature, low birth weight, or sick, they must have newborn screening done. And as they've said, there are certain signs and symptoms that may actually mimic a very sick baby and all the more we need the correct diagnosis. The second important point that they mentioned is actually that because um, when a baby is very sick or premature, there may, be, there may be a need to allow the physiologic changes and thus a repeat is needed. But what, whatever the condition of the baby is, newborn screening must be done. Okay. Now, um, in terms of uh, timing, we also heard from our speakers that from our panelists that if you're planning a blood transfusion, you really want to get the sample. And that was also emphasized in the last episode because once the patient has been transfused, there's timing for the, the testing for, for newborn screening. So, so Dr. Bing, how does prematurity affect the, the results of newborn screening? Prematurity may give a false positive or false negative results. For example, in TSH, OHP, and IRT. Preterm babies are at risk for having a false positive initial screen for congenital adrenal hyperplasia and false negative initial screens for congenital hypothyroidism. So these babies require repeat newborn screenings on the 28th day of life or prior to discharge, whichever comes first. So it is really imperative that repeats for this particular subset of infants will be done. So, so it's not just actually the, the false positive. You're saying that you can, it can also have a, a false negative. So can you give just one, uh, maybe you know, the most common example that you can share with our viewers on uh, wherein you can get a false negative result? False negative results for TSH, for example, or 17-hydroxy. Um, the baby can also have a false negative for congenital hypothyroidism, okay. which is most common for our Filipino babies. Okay, so once again, to our viewers, especially to our coordinators, remember that um, having a sick, a low birth weight, and a, um, a premature baby is actually a red flag for you, and we may have to make sure that we follow through. Uh, what about Dr. Ed? Can you share with the viewers how the low birth weight can affect the, res the newborn screening results? Yes, um, low birth weight babies are, are uh, a different a different breed of babies. You know? uh, the very reason is that something happened inside the mother, which deprived the baby or the fetus of much needed nutrients, uh, uh, deprived the baby also of oxygen, and uh, the the uterus so to speak, has been inhospitable to the fetus to the point that the baby was not getting enough uh, support from the placenta. When this happens, it's called uteroplacental insufficiency. Basically, it just means that there's not enough blood going into the baby uh, from the mother and the baby doesn't have any other source of nutrients and oxygen except the mother. So when you deprive this, the baby will not grow and the baby is nutrient deprived, meaning that when the baby comes out, he will more than likely be malnourished. 
and the baby has existed uh, for quite some time in, a, in an environment which is not uh, hospitable or which is not conducive to growth. And so obviously when these babies come out, they are highly stressed, they are small, they are considered uh, growth restricted or malnourished. And so their metabolic profile may not reflect their true genetic metabolic profile. Uh, they're often on antibiotics, they're often on fluids, they're often on total parental nutrition because of their malnutrition. We have to provide uh, uh, sufficient uh, external nutrition or total parental nutrition as soon as possible. All of these factors uh, will eventually, will actually affect, will actually affect uh, to a significant degree the initial results of your newborn screening. In much the same way, um, if, you re if you don't repeat the test, uh, the chances of having a false negative uh, result will increase. Notably, in the Philippines, we have had several reports of a false negative uh, babies, or babies with false negative results, mostly in the area of congenital hypothyroidism. And this plays in perfectly with the history of a preterm low birth with baby because the DSH surge uh, is, is, uh, is, is delayed. No? Uh, and so you will, you will more than likely have either a normal uh, 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 initial TSH value or initial uh, screen for, for congenital hypothyroidism. And so they, they fall through the cracks because we thought they were all, it was normal. But really, uh, he was hypothyroid. It's just that the TSH did not surge uh, right away because of the uh, medical condition of the baby. And so the, the problem is that these kids will, will have a double whammy. They will have two problems, or they'll have an additional problem. They're not only born premature or small. In this case, they're at risk for later neurocognitive difficulties. But they've also, they, will, they may also have an undiagnosed congenital hypothyroidism or other met, uh, metabolic disorders, which may also uh, lessen or affect their neurodevelopmental outcomes later on. So uh, serial screening has been has always been put forward as a way to mitigate, if not prevent, uh, conditions like this. Because we will see, and we are seeing, and these are from worldwide uh, studies on premature babies, mm -hmm. we will be seeing a higher incidence of false negative results uh, when it comes to screening premature sick and low birth weight babies. Thank you, Dr. Ed, for emphasizing um, the importance of a follow-up or a follow-through for this special set of patients. Uh, once again, the premature, the low birth weight, and, and the sick baby. And, 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 and uh, um, I, I think also this gives our viewers, especially the coordinators, an appreciation that when you send a sample to the center, to the newborn screening center, so many things happen at, uh, at, the, at the lab. It is not like a CBC or a urinalysis wherein when you get the test, there's a result. When you get a urinalysis uh, result, that's it. But in newborn screening, there are many factors that will have to be considered, including the weight, the gestation, and so on. So um, you talked about um, the, the serial, the need for serial testing. I'd like to ask uh, Dr. Bing, what is now, um, because I know that we made an agreement that we will have a repeat on the 28th uh, day of life. Uh, can you uh, expound on this for our viewers on why that repeat test now is so important for, for all the babies? Okay. Um, but first, let me start. Uh, we always tell our NSFs, no, the newborn screening facilities and implementers, the important periods that they have to extract the blood and for us to test here at the newborn screening centers. Um, if we go back to why we have to do the serial monitoring for premature babies, it would go back to why uh, this happens with them. And this is because they have an immature body function. The whole, the whole system is immature. So if I may, I will go through the maturity of the hypothalamic and pituitary thyroid axis and why um, we have to rescreen them after. So for example, um, the immature baby would have an immature hypothalamic pituitary thyroid axis. So the effect here is as what was mentioned by Ed earlier, 
you would see some babies with normal TSH, low T4. So these infants who actually from the get-go were born with congenital hypothyroidism, but because they were born quite premature, they can be missed. And the duration of this effect extends up to about six weeks of age. So the period that we have to look at to recheck, to rescreen for expanded newborn screening for these babies, particularly for CH, would be at six weeks of age. As to the immaturity of the baby's liver enzymes, there we can see some transient elevations of tyrosine, methionine, and galactose, as well as the other amino acids. This also extends to a duration of about two weeks or so, or about a few weeks or so. So again, the importance is in rescreening them at about day 28. As to their kidneys, the renal immaturity, we find that they have elevated 17 OHP and amino acids, which will stay for as long as the baby has not recovered or has not corrected its age. So again, the importance of rescreening for the 28th day of life. Other conditions like hypothyroidsemia is also seen, so that one has to be checked as well. The same duration of effects is up to six weeks of age. And preterms have lower biotinidase levels. Um, and this duration even is seen up to 40 weeks gestation. So that is the reason why we do have to have serial determinations for our preterm babies. Thank you, Dr. Bing. And um, uh, that, will, that, that, will, that will actually really explain uh, the, the case of the, uh, the premature baby. But let's say, uh, Dr. Ed, this time on a sick baby, do you want the baby to be fully recovered before you repeat the, the exam? Is that needed, Dr. Ed? Uh, usually for term sick kids, um, they, they run into some issues. For example, uh, they get confused or they get multiple transfusions for FFP or IVIG or GCSF because they were so sick. And so I repeat, it's important. Um, so they usually will follow the prescribed guidelines for repeat newborn screening uh, after a period of transfusion. Um, and so they also need to follow uh, uh, guidelines for repeat uh, ENBS for babies who have been on TPN or, or have been on other medications. So uh, the best time uh, so as not to miss uh, uh, any of uh, any case is really to uh, do the repeat the new screening before they are sent home because at that point you are presuming they are already on full team they are off antibiotics they are growing they are on full feed and there are, of course their vital signs are stable already so that may be the best time to repeat the screen just before discharge and of course there's always a risk when they go home they may not they may be lost to follow up uh, uh, so the the better thing to do there is that's why we put in uh, in, in the protocol that uh, it is an option to actually repeat the test uh, at discharge. And this is usually more more for the term babies who were sick uh, who were sick at birth. Okay, so I mean both of both our panelists explained that. Uh, when you have a sick, a premature, and a low birth weight baby, the, the care does not really end. You know, the patient goes home. No, there is a need for monitoring. So, for our clinicians, our pediatricians, and the physicians who are listening on, um, uh, if you're attending to a baby who has been had a a, a positive result of uh, for newborn screening and still being monitored, it is really your responsibility now to make sure that these tests are actually they 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 actually follow through. So. I mean, aside from the sick, the premature and low birth weight, uh, Dr. Ed, are, are there any other special cases that we must remember when we deal a patient with uh, uh, you know, other special cases that we can discuss outside from what we discussed in the last episode and this one? Have we missed out on anything, Dr. Ed? Uh, um, certain, certain babies, for example, with congenital anomaly may need a uh, 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 Close screening or close the uh, close monitoring. Um, as we know, as you know, um, physical or phenotypic uh, manifestations of congenital anomalies usually are considered as clues as to the possibility of other congenital anomalies, be it metabolic, hematologic, or other uh, disorders that can still be detected by uh, expanded newborn screening. So. Uh, 
you know, we always put in the, in, in the, uh, we always tell the, the, the NSF, whenever you see the genitalia doesn't have, doesn't seem to be correct. Uh, this is, this looks like a Down's baby. This looks like a, a baby with trisomy uh, 21 or other forms of, of trisomy. This kid looks like uh, he has some other congenital anomaly. He has a heart problem. He has limb anomaly. He, you know, he's syndromic in a way. That is already a red flag that you should probably be doing a metabolic screen also. Uh, in which case, your your best tool is the initial newborn screening test. This also gives uh, gives the clinician an idea, the or the idea that he should probably be monitoring this kid uh, very closely because uh, some of these metabolic disorders may be uh, may only happen when certain conditions happen. For example, whenever they get a viral infection. If they develop diarrhea and they have a dehydration or they have some period of observation, that's the time some of these metabolic disorders may actually come into play. So there are triggers to certain metabolic conditions that they have to be aware of. Uh, what, is, what I think is truly important is for clinicians and new trainers uh, to be aware uh, of, of certain conditions that they may see in the nursery, which may give them an important clue that they should be monitoring these kids closer. So, so thank you. Thank you for, for that explanation. So what you're saying is that, you know, as a, as a health professional now on the front line, uh, there, may, there may be other red flags that we should not ignore. And, you know, the example that you gave is actually a baby with Down syndrome uh, with probably an elevated PSH or a normal PSH, which, which may need uh, further testing upon the release of the newborn screening result. Um, uh, you know, there's a lot of this. Uh, I know that this is a concern among the health, uh, the newborn screening coordinators about the, the charging when you have to repeat the test. So is there an extra cost for repeating the test, Dr. Bing? Can you uh, enlighten us on this policy? So while we know that the initial expanded newborn screening is covered by PhilHealth as mandated um, and as part of the newborn package, the repeat collection is free, care of, uh, the facility of the newborn screening center where they are assigned to. So for example, for newborn screening center, Northern Luzon, we care for regions one and two. So all newborn screening facilities there um, send their cards to us and we run that care of the facility. Most especially, we watch out for those who are indigent so that nobody will fall through the cracks the facility cares, uh, takes care of those repeat collections. So it's free. Okay, so- especially, okay. If the initial, especially if the initial result is positive or unfit anyway. So, so just, just keep in mind that if a baby needs to be retested, you can reassure the family that the, the, the newborn screening center actually will take care of the fee for the repeat test because we have to resolve a couple of things. Now, I'd like to ask each of you for your challenges. No? Just in the field of, you know, we've, you've described the challenges with results, but as the head of your respective, um, respective uh, uh, newborn screening centers, this is the time to actually address our newborn screening coordinators, you know, listening to you now. What are your common challenges in relation to the topic that we're discussing now? Maybe this is time when we can reach out to them and explain some a message to them. We'll start with Dr. Ed. Let's talk to your Visayas. Uh, yes, ma'am. Visayas. Uh, well, the, 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 the Visayas, oh, read, yes. yeah, well, the Visayas regions are the most archipelagic of the entire, of the entire country. So, we not only have uh, individual island provinces, we have island barangays. And um, uh, economic-wise, there's also a huge uh, discrepancy between uh, uh, between cities that are well off and cities that are not well off or uh, communities that are not so well off. So um, we've always had uh, 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 lots of issues with transport. Because, because we're really archipelagic, so mostly in Region 8. But um, we've, we've also created some, some ways as to get the, get the samples to us uh, earlier so we can test them uh, as soon as possible. Um, but what I'm really quite happy with is that uh, our coordinators do not run out of ideas on how to get the job done. 
I believe that they just need guidance. So they're always, they've always been willing to do the new working test. But uh, some of them, because I guess because of the turnaround time and all of that, uh, they need a lot of guidance. And so to us, um, repeating, you know, uh, repeating, retraining, uh, re-educating uh, NSF uh, has been a very important step in trying to get our numbers up. Of course, the pandemic has affected uh, our operations perhaps uh, quite severely in certain regions and not as badly in other regions. Uh, so courier transport has always been an issue. Uh, but again, there are there are so many ideas that people are using that we are using now to try to uh, get a hold of that situation as well. Um, sometimes we, we, we hear uh, complaints about you know, we're repeating the test too many times. Okay, so why do we have to keep repeating it? And that has, uh, that's been quite an issue for quite some time already. Uh, I think the, the issue comes from the concept that, uh, you know, you have to repeat a test for positive, you have to repeat a test for contaminated, you have to repeat a test for all of this. And I think the solution is that if you get the job done right the first time, then you may not have to repeat the test again and again, except for premature and low birth weight baby. And so there's a need for change in the fundamental concept that the reason you we may be repeating the test is because the quality of the samples may not be as good, or there may be some discrepancies in the way we filled out the filter card. Uh, and so uh, educating, uh, and that is, I think, one of the ways uh, we are trying to get a better hold of our sample by emphasizing the importance of it. More importantly, the, uh, emphasizing the, the need for getting the job done right the first time because that eventually will save you more money that will actually save you more time. Uh, that has been the difficult in the uh, geographic location, the economic of it, uh, training and retraining new people. Uh, and of course, uh, having to repeat the test, but uh, we're doing a lot of things to try to mitigate those issues. Uh, of course, educating people about differences in doing your work screening for the preterm and the sick baby uh, requires a lot more understanding of the of, of the of the reasons why we, of the reasons why we have to do it. And so this is a perfect opportunity for for us to share and to explain why. Uh, preterm low you uh, preterm low birth weight testing babies are a special group that need to be monitored closely. Thank you, Dr. Ed. So you see how complex it is, no? He, he, he talks about the challenges of even getting the sample, but then when it reaches the lab, you know, deciding to repeat a test doesn't always mean it was poor quality, it's because of the protocol in taking care of the patient. Uh, what about Dr. Bing? Any other challenges, you know, as out, outside of this preterm, uh, sick, and low birth weight that you've been encountering in the northern Luzon? Aside from the similar challenges of the courier, um, those who carry the samples to us, um, my regions cover the coast up to the mountain ranges, so it's really extra challenging for us. The farthest from us is Batanes, I would say, um, the island province of Batanes. Um, our challenge, actually, because of the geographic um, distances, is tracking down that singular patient that needs to have the follow-up screening. And we found out that because we work closely with our regional counterparts, and this occurred with a patient who was coming from Region 2, the collaboration is very important between the NSC as well as the CHD regional coordinators down to the people on the ground, to the nurses and the doctors at the facilities for us to successfully bring in a particular, just one baby for us to take care of. Um, last year, however, we, we lost a very sick baby, but we were able to practice that way of coordination. Um, those for me are the very significant challenges from the program's point of view. If we really want to track down and save as many as we can, sometimes some babies are quite challenging to look for because of the length and breadth of the, of the um, regions. 
but really with close coordination with our program partners, it becomes successful. It really, you can see how, how dedicated and passionate the people on the ground are and we can do no less. So um, for me, aside from the program challenges, despite the pandemic uh, years of last year and this year, I think for us, it's business um, continuity. That's uh, a challenge, but I think we are trying to get over it. We are trying to live with it, embedding the new normal work style. And uh, we can do no less towards our NSFs. While we cannot see them face to face, we have developed that virtual monitoring system to oversee them, their operations, and look at the problems that they face while we cannot meet them face to face. So very interesting challenges, but something that we constantly try to work on. And uh, it seems that my program manager and his PDO team have, uh, I think, solved for most. Uh, thank you, Dr. Bing and uh, Dr. Ed. You know, I, I really ask because it's, it's really very challenging to be ahead of a, of a lab. And um, Dr. Bing is actually you have 700 or more uh, facilities that you're serving. Am I correct, uh, uh, Dr. Bing? About 700 plus health facilities uh, in Region 1 and the Cordillera, in, in the CAR region. Region 1 and 2, ma'am. About 700 plus. And then for, for, uh, for uh, Dr. Ed, who is the head, he, he's running all the hospital and working facilities actually in Region 6 and Region 8. So when, when Dr. Bing was talking about even saving just one baby from out in the mountain, that, that happens all over the country. Whether it's an island barangay, as Dr. Ed was saying, or up in the mountain, or even in a very busy, uh, you know, in, in NCR, tracking down the baby is part of the challenge. And just imagine that uh, when a baby has been premature, has had low birth weight, or has been sick and needs to be monitored, so the challenges actually even goes beyond the discharge. So I want to thank both of you for emphasizing that the caring for these children does not end from the screening, but actually has to continue on until they go home to their, to their families. So we've actually tackled all the issues for, for the premature low term and the sick baby. I just would like to request our panel, our guests, to probably give their final uh, message to our viewers. Let me start with, uh, maybe Dr. Bing, let's start with you. Just a final message. Um, first off, thank you for the invitation to be part of this uh, fun TVUP interview. Um, for the newborn screening of Northern Luzon, um, the newborn screening program will continue its mandate to screen all Filipino babies within our responsible uh, regions with particular vigilance in the screening of the preterms, the low birth weight, and sick newborns, as this group presents very unique challenges. The NSCs, like the one we have in Northern Luzon, will stand ready to support further testings when initial screens are positive until their conditions resolve. And God bless us all in the Philippines. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Bing, Dr. Ed. Um, Mom, thank you for the opportunity to be, to be with you and to share our views on uh, screening this uh, uh, special group of kids. Uh, more importantly, uh, thank you for creating this venue for uh, for all of the newborn sending heads uh, to actually uh, participate and share their uh, opinions and their views. Uh, we're all uh, facing extraordinary times. What will uh, distinguish us from the rest is how we solved it and how we lived with it and how we overcame uh, this struggle. There is no lack of good ideas out there. It's just how we're going to implement these good ideas that are continuing to be a challenge. And I think uh, this program that you're doing uh, is one of those innovations that we should probably be doing more uh, in the next couple of years. Uh, and so thank you for the opportunity to be here. I finally saw being after a while uh, on Skype online. Hi, uh, and I, I am happy and uh, uh, sad to note that She's having the same problems I have. So, hindi ako nag -iisa. I'm not the only one facing this struggle. Thank you, um, 
But thank you, Dr. Bing and Dr. Ed, uh, for, for joining us today. You know, in this episode, we learned that low birth weight and sick newborns are very special cases and must be treated with special attention. And because of the physiologic changes in the, pre in the preterm and the low birth weight, newborn screening must be repeated and actually must be resolved um, for their other medical problems. Uh, as stressed by our panelists, false positivity and false negativity must be resolved and must not remain hanging because it's going to be very important for the doctors who will take care of them after discharge. So we've heard that preterms must have a repeat test uh, on the 28th day of life. Dr. Ed was saying that sick babies must have a repeat test before discharge, before we lose them, before they are lost to follow up. And I um, uh, understanding the problems of this subset will be able to help guide uh, the doctors, the pediatricians, and the nurses who will take care of them after discharge. We've heard Dr. Bing and Dr. Ed, they remain committed to ensure that the program runs throughout the country. They, they, they serve hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of hospitals throughout the country for so many, for so long a time now. And as Dr. Ed said, we live in a community we're in, there are a lot of good ideas, good ideas coming down from the ground. And uh, I think, you know, what we have to do now is to live on with this struggle, the COVID-19 right now. And more importantly, you know, we find a way on how we can implement these good ideas. So once again, thank you very much to Dr. Bing and Dr. Ed for joining us in this episode. Um, I look forward to another episode with both of you. Maraming salamat. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Preterm, low birth weight, and sick newborns are at risk of missed or unreliable testing due to many factors as discussed by our guest today. To ensure reliability of newborn screening results, a repeat collection has to be done for all of these newborns. To our virtual audience, please send us your comments questions or the list of topics that you want us to cover in our succeeding episodes. Email us at info at newbornscreening.ph or you may tweet us at newbornscreenph and also include the hashtag ENBSPH. Before we end, I want to again take this opportunity to present to you the new addition to our tools in learning, our ENBS mobile app. The ENBS mobile app is a one-stop hub for all NBS health workers on everything they need to know about newborn screening. It also features a rewards program that our health workers can use to earn points and use it to claim shop vouchers with our partners. If you have already downloaded the app, answer the quiz that will be sent to your inbox to earn those points. We continue to improve our services as deemed necessary by the emerging challenges through an open dialogue about our experiences in newborn screening. It is our hope that through this program, we extend the sharing of knowledge with greater reach empower our frontliners, improve connectivity with newborn screening coordinators, and most importantly, provide unparalleled service to every family. On our next episode, we will be discussing the experiences of our newborn screening centers in the midst of the pandemic and how this affected the program. This and more here in Newborn Screening in Focus. Nothing is more precious than seeing a child grow healthy and normal. Let's realize this through newborn screening. Newborn screening is a gift of life. Yeah, that would look
process na magpa NBS. Ilang patak ng dugo ang kailangan para magawa ang best. Makalipas ang 24 oras pag si baby lumabas. Gawin natin ng NBS ang lead sunod sa batas. Oh, oh, I'm your baby. Suck and blessing. Kaya dapat magpa-newborn screening. Oh, I'm your baby. Suck and blessing. Kaya dapat magpa-newborn screening. Sa iyo rin to, sa kalusukan mo 